Hey guys, I'm Kai from Lucas Land and Royals. Hope you're doing well. Today I am building another snake rack and this just might be the last one for the snake room. Guys, my snakes are running out of tubs and this room is running out of space. But I'm gonna build one more rack and I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to really provide more detail around the build, not just of the rack skeleton itself, but also I get questions around the base, the rolling base, I get questions around the wiring, and I also get a lot of questions around the measurements. So I'm gonna use this video to really provide more detail so that you guys can follow the build. So here we go, we're gonna start off with the measurements. The size of the rack and the measurements of all the pieces revolve around the dimensions of the tub. So the tub needs to be selected first and then we'll take measurements off of this. Based on those measurements, we'll come up with our cut pieces. I'm going to start off getting just the length, width and the height. After getting the length, width and height, I round up those values just to give myself some wiggle room. I add about one quarter to the length and the width. As for the height, that needs to be precise. I add exactly one eighth inch which will provide a gap for airflow. I've gone ahead and calculated my cuts based off of the tub size that we got earlier. So we'll need two pieces, which accounts for the top and bottom. And the length is going to be 22 and a half, which is just like what we got up here. Now for the width of the top and bottom, I've simply added one inch to the width of the tub size, making it 15 and a half. And that's the account for the thickness of the material. The material is going to be half inch PVC sheet. For the inner shelves, the same length, 22 and a half. Now for the width, I kept the 14 and a half. Again, we're using half inch PVC material. Now there's gonna be seven inner shelves, plus the top and bottom. That'll give us slots for eight tubs. For the legs, it gets a little bit tricky. We're gonna need four legs. I'm gonna calculate the height of the legs here. First, we take the height of the tub and we're gonna multiply by the number of tubs, which will be eight in this case. Then we have to add in half inch for the thickness of the material. And like I said, there's gonna be seven inner shelves. So if you put this into a calculator, the end result is 46 and a half inch. Now the width of these legs should probably range around four and a half and up. Um, I typically keep mine at four and a half to six. I'm gonna be cutting these legs out of some scraps, so I have to go and check to see what I have. But the height is gonna to have to be 46 and a half. I will be using lumber, part of the build. This is half inch piece of plywood that I have laying around, and I've cut this down to size. 22 and a half by 15 and a half, half inch thick plywood. I will be painting it white to match the rack, and this will serve as the bottom piece. Also using lumber, I'm gonna be building the base. So the base here is two by fours. These are cut to 15 and a half. And then I have two more two by fours. These are cut to 19 and a half. So now we have something like a picture frame and the total Width is 15 and a half, total length is 22 and a half, which happens to be the same as our rack. And then I'm gonna paint it and add the wheels and have the rack sit on top just to make it easier to move in the future. I'm going to screw the four corners together. I'm making pilot holes to allow the screws to go in easier and prevent the wood from splitting since I'm working so close to the ends. The screws are just two inch outdoor screws. 
You can even go a step further and use deck screws. Both types have a coating that prevents rust. It's important for all four corners to be square, which just means the corners need to be as close as possible to 90 degrees. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, especially since this frame is so small, but you can use a right angle ruler or a corner clamp. After all four corners are attached, I give all the lumber, including what would be the bottom of the rack, a coat of paint. I'll end up doing another coat of paint for a total of two coats. I want to get back to building the actual rack itself. So earlier we had all the measurements except for the width of these legs. Now the total height is 46 and a half, but I didn't have the width and that's because I went to my garage to look for scrap and I found these and I cut them down. There's two thinner ones, this one and the one on top that is cut to four and a half each. And then the two that are on the bottom, this was one big piece and I just ripped it down the center, making these two pieces six and a half inch width. So I want to make a mark along here at five and seven eighths. To make it easier for myself, I added a piece of blue tape. This way I don't have to keep looking for the seven eighths. So I'm going to keep measuring from this end over here at the very end. I'm going to keep measuring until I no longer have five and seven eighths anymore. And what I should be left with is the last tub height, which is five and three eighths. Rather than measuring out and marking with the ruler, I use the first one as a template, line up another piece and transfer the marks over with the pencil. Another way to transfer the mark over is with tape rather than pencil. Line up the tape's edge to the mark. The tape should be long enough to bridge both pieces. Then simply cut the tape down the center with the blade. Now I have two pieces with marks that are mirror images. Drawing arrows help me remember which side to install the interior shelves. I'm at the point where I can start assembling the rack. So what I've done so far is just dry fit a couple of the pieces together. So over in this corner, these are temporary supports. So that one shelf actually doesn't belong there, it's just there to hold it temporarily. And I'm using these corner clamps which I really like using as an extra set of hands. Over on this side, this is going to be my top. So that actually is going to be exactly how you see it. And now I just have to fasten everything together. For fasteners, I'm going to use these Fathead Phillips screws and they're going to require a pre-drill with a 764 inch bit and a countersink hole with a 1 quarter inch bit. I start by making pilot holes, then change out the bit and make countersink holes. The screws go in guided by the pilot holes. The screw's head seats perfectly into the negative space created by the countersink holes. The screw heads sit flush with the surface of the PVC material. Repeat the same steps to attach the next upright. Now I attach all the inner shelves. I'm just putting one screw at each connection point for now. This just makes it easier to take apart if I make a mistake. I'll go back and add another set of screws and I'll show you that in a moment. This is the point of the process where those blue tape markers really come in handy. 
Since they mark exactly where the shelves should be attached, it makes lining up the pieces so much easier. At this point, I can make the pilot holes for the second set of screws. I like this process because I don't have to change out the bit so often. I make all the pilot holes, then change out the bit once and make all the countersink holes. I go around again to drive in the second set of screws, then back out the first set of screws to drill out countersink holes with the one quarter inch bit. And that's already in the power drill. The paint on the bottom piece has dried, so it's time to attach it just like attaching the top. Top, bottom, and inner shelves are all in place, and it's time to flip the assembly over to work on the other side. More pilot holes, more countersink holes, and more screws. Pretty much exactly what I showed you earlier. So let's move on to the base now that it's painted and dried. I have four wheels that swivel. Two of them have locks which will be attached on the side that will be the front. They each get attached with three screws. I create pilot holes just to make it easier for the screws to go in. Notice the wheel plate bridge the joints which will further strengthen the base at its corners. Let's give this a quick test and tuck this project away. I'll come back and finish it later. Well that wasn't too hard, it definitely wouldn't have been so easy if I made it out of melamine. So that about wraps it up for this video. I am going to be releasing a part 2 which is going to be all about the heating components. I'm going to have a ton of details in that one which is why I'm breaking this up into a two part series. So you don't want to miss it, I'm going to be wiring up a STC1000 which is the heat controller that I have been using. If you're new to this channel and you want to be informed of future uploads, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. If you enjoyed this video or find it helpful, please give me a like. Thanks for watching, please share, and I'll see you guys next time.